Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Classroom Matters podcast with me, your host, Christy Hool, where we dive into the hottest topics in education. And today, our guest is Dr. Frank Buck, who, after retiring from public education, devoted his second career to writing and speaking on organization, time management, and personal productivity for educators. He is also the author of Get Organized, Time Management for School Leaders, and Get Organized Digitally, The Educator's Guide to Time Management. Dr. Buck realized that most educators are overwhelmed by the amount of paper and digital information in their jobs. So after 30 years as a teacher, principal, and central office administrator, he saw the difference in how having simple systems just make your job easier and realized what he was doing was really easy to teach. So that brings us to Dr. Buck and our episode today. Thank you so much for being with us, Dr. Buck. Christy, it is a pleasure. It is a pleasure. And please, Frank, as we go through the episode, we're (laughs) friends here. (laughs) Yeah, I wasn't sure, but I, I like that. So Frank and I were talking prior to us kind of pushing the record button about how I know as an educator and as a mom and as, you know, a homeschool mom for a while and as a a principal and a teacher, organization is so important to me. And I think I was like, this is my jam. Like I have to have Uh systems, but not everybody, it's not everybody's jam, Frank. And so it's not (laughs) a little bit about like, just start with your background. Love Uh to hear how you got to this point. Um, because in the intro, I even said, you know, you sort of started to realize this in your own career. So kind of take us back to your yeah. career as an educator and how this all came to be. Well, you know, when, when people say, you know, when did this all start? Have you always been organized? I was lucky in that I hit the brick wall early as a high school senior. I was a good student. And up to that point, I could get by on, you know, I can remember that. I can remember that. I can fold a piece of paper in half and stick it in a textbook and somehow see it when I needed to see it. Senior year was different. There was just more going on. And I realized I've got to have some kind of system so that I can put something, put everything I have to do in one place, see it all there and and quit having to remember it all. And so for me, the very first system was an index card for each day. So I had a little metal file box, three by five index cards, one for every day, just wrote down on each one what I needed to do that day, where I needed to be. So every morning, grab the card, take a look at it, stick it in my pocket, I'm out the door. And then anything that came up during the day, homework assignments, flip it on the back of the card, jot it down. Somebody gives you a phone number, Jot it on the back of the card. Long-term project. English teacher says, oh, we're going to do term paper. It's going to be due April 15th. Jot it on the back of the card, April 15th. And what I tell people is way back then, what I was doing was earning the right to forget about it. Because as soon as I wrote it on the back of that card, I didn't have to remember it anymore. And I didn't have to worry about what I was forgetting. So after school, I've got exactly one job. Clear the card. Do what's on it. Check it off. If it's something to be done in a, on a future day, write it on the card for that day. If it's that uh, that term paper, break the steps down and decide when do I want to have it typed? Because that's when I grew up when mm-hmm. typing it was a big thing. But you know, put the put the things on the card for that day, and it and it made life so much easier. So the idea, and when people say, "Where do you start?" If if if, if you're ju- you're scattered, where do you start? Write it down, and it can be write it down on a memo pad you keep in your pocket, or it can be the phone that's synced to the computer. But one place where not, oh, I'll write that down when I get back to my desk. Mm -hmm. I'll write that back. I'll write that down when I get back to my classroom after lunch. No, write it down in the moment because something else is waiting. And as soon as you write it down, you can forget about it. You can move on to the next thing and you can be fully present where you are. And so many of us aren't. We're thinking about everything in the world except the person right in front of us. Now, as a first year teacher, and I was in the middle of a master's program when my dream job came open. So, you know, January the 4th or whatever, right after Christmas, here I am walking in as the new teacher, junior high band director. And I thought I was going to be a band director for 30 years. 
Krista, you would be amazed at how many little bitty tasks are involved in planning a something simple as a junior high band concert. But what I realized was once you figured out what they were one time, it was going to be the same thing next year. So the big aha for me as a first year teacher was taking the that that already established habit of write it down immediately in one place and add to that, identify the repeating tasks so that next year my future self thanks me for having it all laid out. Mm-hmm. Eight years into my journey, we got a new principal. And when I, I had never thought about being an administrator, I thought I don't want the headache. But when I saw what one person could do in an already high-performing school, I did some rethinking. And so four years later, I am an administrator. And so middle school assistant principal, elementary principal, central office coordinator in you know a career of almost 30 years. Mm-hmm. And you know, when people say what what helped you along? It was, you know, it's like being organized. It, it's just figuring out what needs to be done, putting it in that place, organizing what I'd put in the system, and then just doing the work. Mm-hmm. So you're, it's funny because as I listen to you, well, first of all, I'm my mind is blown that as a senior, you were having the wherewithal to write index cards to organize yourself. I mean, so this is a skill that has sort of just been something that's been inside of you for a while. It's just sort of probably who you are because having three teenage boys, I can promise you (laughs) none of the three high school students that I have are writing anything on index cards Mm -hmm. and putting them in their, in their books. And you know, everything is different now, right? Like when we were in high school, everything is digital and they have lists upon lists in their phones. Um, But yeah, as I was listening to you too, hearing you say, write it down write then uh-huh. and write everything down in the same place. Because do you find that sometimes folks will write things down and they think that they're being organized, but then they can't find all the random places that they've written things. So t- <laughs> talk a little bit about how people might, they try to be organized teachers and principals, but their system just might not be working. Uh-huh. So, you know, we talked about the index card. So fast forward decades. And so now I have an app called Remember the Milk. And even the free version is extremely powerful. Anybody could have it today, rememberthemilk.com, because it's a website with a companion app you can download for free on your phone. So everything that's that's one place, you know, goes the other place. And and so, you know, I'm out and about. So today, instead of having an index card in my pocket, I've got my phone. We all have our phone in a pocket or mm-hmm. purse. I pull it out, hit a little icon on the desktop, talk, and it's just a little remember the milk widget. And so what I, whatever I'm saying becomes a task mm-hmm. in my little remember the milk inbox. It's just like the back of the card, only it's the 2023 version of that index card. And so at the end of the day, I look at, you know, here's everything that I've thrown it. Now, let me look at the wording. Are things worded so that when I go to do this task, I'll actually remember what I meant? When do I want to see this task again? Give it a due date for that date. And then just, you know, clear it all out of the inbox and move it to a list I called organized. And so then in the morning, instead of pulling the index card out of the little metal file box, I'm looking at my computer at Remember the Milk there or on my phone. And here's my list for today in a nice, neat little order. My fab five at the top, the five most important things that I want to do during the day. Then here's my morning and my afternoon and my evening. And I've got it worded so it's clear. Here's the biggie. It's got to be easy to do. I mean, let's face it. Humans do what's easy. If I have two things on my list, buy shoestrings and solve world hunger. Yeah. World hunger is a whole lot more important. 
But shoestrings, I know where to get them. I know how much they cost. I know how to install them. So at the end of the day, shoestrings will have been bought and installed and saw world hunger is going to be there forever. So being able to breaking those things down so that it's doable and so that it's easy and that breathes and that lives and that gives you the freedom. You know, there's sometimes I just look at the list and go, those are great things. But now that I look and I really don't have to do any of those things today, I can now go this. You know, you get a phone call from a friend and go, hey, let's go shopping. Mm-hmm. Let's go catch a movie. I can go, yeah, I can do that. Let's yeah. go. Please but wait. You know, when you talk about habits of people and you were just mentioning, you know, solving world hunger and getting shoestrings, is it is it a easier sometimes for people to even break down their tasks further, right? So I'm thinking of solve solving world hunger, because a lot of times we will go, eh, that's too overwhelming and too hard. I'm going to move that to tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes mm-hmm. and I'm like, uh, eh, also seems too hard today. I'm going to move it and move it and move it. And you just keep moving it from Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday to Thursday, because that one task seems so overwhelming. So do you mm-hmm. suggest in the world of organization and time management and productivity to actually break tasks down to like a realistic, doable approach for each day? It, it's got to be. You know, The things that I have on my list, they're like a phone call to make, an email to write, um, a person to walk down the hall and talk to. But so many times we, we just we don't go that far. And so that that big project just simply stays a big project. You know, like like for me back as a high school senior and the term papers due April the 15th. Well, I'm thinking in terms of what do I want the subject I'm writing on to be? What title do I want to have this? When do I want to go to the library and start some initial research? When do I want to kind of have like a little sort of table of contents, so forth, so on? When do I want to have the draft done? When do I want to have it typed? And and so I can go to the library. I know where it's located. I had a driver's license. I could go and do that. But if it was just write the term paper. Mm-hmm. I'd be doing like most high school students and the day before the term papers do, it's like you pull an all nighter and the, and the paper looks like that. And I, I don't want to live like that. Mm-hmm. I just, I, I don't. Yeah. So you're talking about having an end goal and then sort of using that backwards design model mm-hmm. to baby step up to where you need to be. That's really great advice. I mean, especially for kids too, right? I mean, I know, I know you're gearing this towards educators and and principals and teachers and and all folks that are in education but wow what a great skill for students mm-hmm. I mean just that example of the term paper yeah you uh, I told you I was an elementary principal and so one of the things that that we did we bought planners for all the students from first grade up didn't really work for kindergarten so well but even for first graders it it was oh parents loved it and and we got grant money because any business, you say, mm-hmm. we're trying to raise and educate children who are going to be responsible, who are going to be on time, who are organized. They're like, how can we help you? So, you know, it, it was all funded you know, by, by someone else. So everybody had their planner. And then Monday morning as part of the morning announcements was everyone open your planner to this week. Here's what's coming up. And I'd tell them what to write. And where to write it. And then the first grade teacher would follow up a little differently, say, than the fifth grade teacher. So if it was, you know, uh, picture day's Friday. So in Friday square, square, write picture day. Now in Thursday square, write pick something to wear for mm-hmm. picture day. So, you know, we were, you know, we, we were teaching these habits as we went. Uh, and back during those days, uh, accelerated reader was something mm-hmm. that our school oh, did, yeah. and, and the, the <laughs> teachers and kids really bought into it. And we had the hundred point club mm-hmm. where we had a special field trip at the end of the year for everybody who had earned a hundred points. And so we said to the kids, "Now, when do you want to have that hundred points? You don't want to really push it to the last day, okay? So if you want to have your hundred points by April the first, where do you want to be?" December the 1st. 
Okay, let's let's flip to December and put that number in your planner. If you want to be there December 1st, where do you want to be October 1st? Where do you want to be September 1st? Mm -hmm. So that they're seeing these little mini goals that add up to, you know, being on track for the big goal. So, you know, it, it can start early. You know, and this stuff is teachable. It's just nobody ever taught it to us. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and so, yeah, so you're talking about this as a more proactive um, teaching approach, like an intentional proactive approach to, as an adult, sort of implementing that proactively and that being like a part of your day, right? Your your time management and your productivity mm -hmm. systems, but also teaching it to younger students so that now they're gaining um, the habits, Right. So I know a lot of a lot of teachers are listening to this and a lot of, of parents and, and principals and they're thinking, yeah, this all sounds great. But, you know, I'm just so bogged down with all these other things. I just don't know if I have time. Um, so talk about some of the some of the things I know you've worked with hundreds of educators. You know, you've written mm -hmm. two books, um, you know, the, the digital book and then the the, the guide for educators. Yeah. Um, and so. You know, what are you seeing in your work with educators that's really causing them the most, you know, bogging them down the most, keeping them from actually implementing some of these, these things that are should make their life easier? Mm -hmm. The biggest thing I see is just not figuring out what is that next step? What is that phone call? Um, you know, they kind of have the end goal and it's written somewhere. But between mm -hmm. emails and voicemails and a parent at the door, you know, they're sort of handling whatever comes up and they never have time to sit down on this thing that might take a little time. Uh, whereas there, there you know, other principles that I've worked with and we identify maybe the same goal and it's OK, well, the next step we're going to have to in order to use this software package, we're going to have to have the student names in it. OK, we could export that from our student information system into a spreadsheet and import it over here. Who has the skill to do that? Mm -hmm. Oh, Tom does that kind of stuff all the time. So now it's a quick email to Tom. Can you do this particular report for us? And then you can move on. End of the day, the whole thing's been handled. You do the same thing with another principal and two months later, you're still waiting. <laughs> on what had been a five minute job mm -hmm. if we just figured out what mm -hmm. that little step was. So, you know, figuring out and, you know, uh, uh, so many people have heard of David Allen and that's been sort of one of the hallmark books, the, the, the getting things done. And when you boil it down, he's saying, look, what, what's the project? Okay. Figure out what's the very next physical action on it. Is it a phone call? Is it an email? Is it an errand? And put that kind of stuff on your list so that you're just, you're handling these little things that lead up to being the big things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So would you then suggest carving out space and time to plan to schedule? Because you have to sit down, gotcha. right? And like, how mm -hmm. much time should that be? Is that something that you do like on a Sunday at, you know, Sunday evenings, you sit down and I'm just, you know, whatever ideas you have mm -hmm. for folks, because now you're planning. And I, we talked about this before too, didn't we? Before we started recording, I said, I'm the kind of person that has a to-do list for my to-do list, right? Like I have yes. to plan <laughs> to plan. So is that something that you suggest is like carving out maybe 10 minutes a day or a half an hour a week to plan what you need to actually put on your, your schedule? And, and I'd say those two examples are both right on the money. I think we all have to do some adjusting daily because you, you don't know on Monday morning what's going to happen on Wednesday, what's going to hit you. Uh, and guaranteed, if you're a teacher or principal, something will. There will be something significant that happens this week that you had no idea was coming. So some adjustment needs to be done daily. What did I think I was going to get done that I didn't get done? And one of the nice things about having a digital list is whatever doesn't get done simply rolls over to the next mm -hmm. day. Yeah, I have not rewritten a to-do list since 2001, very, very literally. So it's just a matter of what might need to, let me change the date a week from now because things have suddenly gotten, uh, you know, pretty hairy. Um, so just, just a few minutes and it, and it could be 
in the evening when you're watching television during a couple of commercials, you could have tomorrow all figured out. Mm -hmm. And then to have a longer section and, you know, 30 minutes just to look at what projects do I have going on? Where am I with those? Um, And then how do I want the next five or so days, you know, what, what do I want to hit the ground with on Monday morning? Mm-hmm. And I like to start every day with, I, I mentioned it w- once already, the, what I call the fab of five. If I don't get anything else done, what are the five things that I can have sitting right at the top of that to-do list that if I get those done, no matter what else comes along during the day, I'm okay. Because, you know, as a principal, one thing a student does or a parent does or a teacher does that can change your whole Mm -hmm. day so if i can have okay here are these five and then everything else will keep you know i try to work ahead of deadline so that i'm not going you know and when i talk about due dates it's when do i want to see that task not when's the drop dead due date that Mm -hmm. it's got to be by somebody to Mm -hmm. by somebody else Mm-hmm. So maybe giving yourself a cushion if it's due on Friday, put down to kind of trick yourself and say Wednesday, it, push exactly. back the deadline a little bit for your own sake. And one way that helps me is this. You avoid all of those little phone calls and emails saying, oh, just wanted to remind you mm-hmm. that it's due on Friday. It's like they've already got it before they could even remind me. and. You also earn the reputation for, look, I'm not going to have to follow up with him. I'm not going to have to stick my head in the door and bug him. All these little interruptions. But when you work ahead of the deadlines and you have a reputation for coming through, people start trusting you. And they start trusting you with bigger, more important more interesting things Mm -hmm. and the little mundane things, they kind of find their way down the hallway to Mm -hmm. to, to somebody else. They bring you the things that are significant because they know you're going to come through. Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny. I'm just sitting here remembering having to stick my head in you saying as an administrator or a teacher, because they, they will come after you when you're talking about the world of public education, central office comes after principals because their building items aren't turned in. And then the principal comes and comes after I'm, you know, I'm being a little, trying to be a little Mm -hmm. silly with that, not really coming after, but you know, then the principals have to go locate the teachers and they, that's exactly what happens is you walk down the hall and you poke your head in their door and you say, don't forget to submit X, Y, Z, form today. It's due today. I don't have yours yet. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And that is not a fun place to be. Yeah. And, and there's the poor teacher who's already up to their eyeballs with stuff. Mm -hmm. And now here's another reminder. Here's another reminder. Here's another reminder. Yeah. Um, I often say to people, Hey, would you like to cut your voicemail and your email in half? And they're like, yes. Tell me how I say respond the first time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How many emails are you getting saying, oh, we haven't gotten your whatever mm-hmm. yet. Just wanted to remind you. Uh, and the voicemail reminding you about the email that they and and then they stick their head in the door to see if you listen to the voicemail that they left reminding you about the yeah. email that was reminding you about the other email. Just you know, get a little bit ahead, you know, have a good system so that you're able to stay ahead of some of this stuff. Yeah. And, you know, and, and so much, so much of it is, is self-imposed. Yeah. Um, I think for me, another one of the things that helped me was not being afraid of technology. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I was that young teacher that was literally on, on a field trip. But the choir teacher was taking her kids to Six Flags over Georgia, said, would you like to go and chaperone? I said, will there be a roller coaster involved? I'm all in, you know, I'm 23, whatever, yeah. And so, you know, the infancy of computers in the school, I had my own little personal computer figuring out how to use it. And I was reading a book and one chapter talked about spreadsheets. And I'd been told spreadsheets, that's that's for accountants. You'll never need a spreadsheet. Well, I read this chapter, I'm going, wait a minute. I could put my grade book on this and let it 
average the grades for me. This is when Reagan was in the White House. So for me, the journey began way back then asking the question, how can I use technology to make mundane things easy? Mm -hmm. So when I got to be a principal, we got, you know, seven schools in the school system, and we would get these edicts from the central office asking seven different principals to gather whatever kind of data. And I'd go sit down with the superintendent and say, look, that's fine. I don't mind doing it. But I just want to let you know, from the central office, you could run that data for the whole system and have it in five minutes, it would be easier for you to do it than it would be to stay on top of seven different people to get Mm -hmm. it in. And so why take a one person job and turn it into a seven person job? But if you don't really know the software, you don't know what the capabilities are and you continue to do the same thing you've always done. Uh, We as people, when we're faced with circumstances We come up with procedures to handle those circumstances. But so often, and especially with technology, our circumstances change, but our procedures stay the same. Yeah. And and I was the one who was always going, okay, this changed. So not what can we add to what we're doing, Mm -hmm. but what can we replace? What now can go out the window and be replaced with something so much simpler and technology has, yeah, you know, technology has been the answer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're talking a little bit about technology, which brings me to the question, your advice or your suggestions or your opinion on those folks that are still doing both paper and computer, right? So they've got all their calendar stuff on their computers. They've got maybe to-do lists on their computers in Trello mm-hmm. or whatever board they're using. And then at home, they have their paper and And I am one of those people, I hate to admit it, are we wasting our time by putting it in multiple places or is that okay? I was the (laughs) biggest Tell me the truth, Dr. Buck, tell me the truth. I was the the biggest paper planner person in the world. You know, I was doing workshops on how to use that Franklin planner or that day timer. So, you know, 1998, 99, you know, I started getting, you know, 100 or so emails a day. And the emails were not really interfacing with the book very well. You know, when you have three emails a day, you can print them off and handle it with your other paper. When you get 103 a day, digital problems require digital solutions. So that's when I, I bought a Palm, synced it to Outlook, you know, and I, you know, and I could drag an appoint, I could drag an email to the calendar and that's on the calendar. I could take an email that was really a to-do and drag it to the task list. And now it's on my digital to-do list. And so overnight, and, and my wife was blown away. She said, okay, now that you have the palm, now that you're doing that, what role does the little book play? I said, the little book is no more. She said, what? For the last 10 years, you and that little book have been inseparable. I said, well, yes. But now we have now changed tools. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I I bit the bullet and just went digital with my task list and my calendar and my contacts. Now, documentation, you know, notes during phone calls, notes during one-on-one meetings with other teachers, with parents. Um, For most people, I would say a paper journal is still your best bet, you know, because with a paper journal, nobody's offended when you're taking notes, when you're, you know, um, but with a digital tool, they think you're just checking your email or Facebook or something like that. So, uh, but yeah, don't, don't do the double duty. Um, and people say, well, I, I like to see the whole month at a glance. Well, (laughs) one, you know, one key, my, if I'm looking at my Google calendar and I hit the M key, now I'm looking at the whole month. If I hit the W key, I'm now looking at this week. If I hit the D key, I'm looking at today. You can switch back and forth from one to the other so easily. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and Christy, like, take for example, what we're doing right now, you sent me a calendar invitation that had the link in it. I clicked to accept it. 
It went onto my Google Calendar. If I had totally forgotten about this, 15 minutes before I was supposed to be on this Zoom with you, a notification on my phone mm-hmm. and my watch and my computer. Ooh, got an appointment in 15 minutes. I go to the appointment on my Google uh, Calendar. There's the link to Zoom. So it's not going back through, oh, where is that link? Let me go through my email and find that email. No, it's all there and it's easy. One click and mm-hmm. here we are. Yeah, I think for for a lot of folks, uh, me, um, but for a lot of our listeners, <laughs> it's like a security blanket, right? Like this this calendar, this this it's right here. I take it with me everywhere. Mm-hmm. My my, it's like it's almost like that security blanket of like you're carrying it around. You can open it up. You can write in it. So I do think for a lot of folks, that I think that's good advice. Trying to just like bite the bullet and get rid of it, just like. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. That's going to be a long journey for me. I'm really attached to my paper planner. Um, but I do think it's it's good advice because we're just wasting time um, mm-hmm. by double. I'm writing everything in there and then I have everything in a, in a Google, you know, on my calendar or digitally. So, yes. OK, so yeah, go to and, one. And, yeah. And, and then you can't trust either one. As soon as you have two calendars, you can't That's trust true. either one. Now, for the person who's who's just getting started in the digital environment, I would suggest carry something around like like a little pocket memo pad so that you can so that in the moment when you need to grab something quickly mm-hmm. that you're not going, OK, how do I get in my in my digital tool quickly? Now, I'm at a point where I'm pretty good at that. Most people aren't there, but you can jot it on that little memo pad, stick it back in your pocket. And then later in the day, Put it in later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You look at what you've written, you and and you kind of make sense out of it. You know that mm-hmm. uh, call Mary. Well, in two hours later, you know that that's call Mary Smith. And the reason you're calling her is you're talking about the birthday party for so-and-so that's on this particular date. And so when you look at call Mary, then on your to-do list, call Mary Smith, put their phone number, put what you're going to be talking Mm -hmm. about, because maybe the phone call isn't actually going to happen for several days. And several days from now, you're you're pretty busy. It would be nice to have all the details there. You can go through that little memo pad, take care of you know, put put it all in the right place. And mm-hmm. you've only got one place to look for the stuff that you that you wrote. It's not across six different legal pads and little scraps of paper, some of which are in your purse and some stuck in the book and some in a pocket and you wrote some stuff on your arm and, you know, it's some in the glove compartment of the car. Yeah. So some people are just all over the place and I'm saying we need to be in one place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's switch gears for a minute and talk about, you know, how how this sort of trickles down. You know, we're talking about teachers and administrators having good time management organization systems, but the real end goal of this is to be more productive to increase student achievement, right? That's why we're all in the careers that we're in. We're in classrooms and if we're administrators, we're helping teachers who then trickle down to help the students. So how do these systems and how do teachers being more productive really help students and student achievement and them increasing student achievement um, within their classroom setting? How does it make that easier for them? And and I think that is the central thing. How does this, that's what we ought to be asking about everything in schools. Mm -hmm. How does this enhance student achievement? And I can answer on several levels. And I think at the top level, at the most important level, the best thing that we can do to increase student achievement is to put the best teacher in every classroom that we can find and help them to be successful and help them to want to stay. And we are in a profession. We it, 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 It's sort of like we eat our young, you know? Mm-hmm. How many teachers burn out several years into it? And it's not because of the subject matter. It's not because of the kids. It's not mm-hmm. because of the parents. It's because there's just, there's so much going on. And, and we don't have systems to deal with it. So one, if individually, as teachers, we're better organized, then we can really then we can see very quickly what's nice, what's okay, and what's got to go. Mm-hmm. We can start looking at at those tasks that we have, especially the repeating tasks. And what can I delegate? 
you know, good first grade teachers really know this. You know, you go into a, a master first grade teacher's room five minutes before the bell rings and buses roll in the afternoon, and it's poetry in motion. They say the magic word, and 20 kids scatter mm-hmm. to all parts of the room, handling 20 different jobs. These two are straightening the reading area. This one's changing the calendar for tomorrow. Mm-hmm. This one's watering the plants. This one's feeding the classroom gerbil. Two minutes later, everybody's back in their seat. The teacher's smiling because 20 jobs have just been done that she doesn't have to do. And I guarantee teachers and administrators who are listening to this, there are things that you're doing that somebody else could do and would be glad to, glad to, and give them a stake in the program. But you don't know what those things are until you have them all in front of you. And when you can see all of your choices, you start to make better choices of what you keep what you delegate, and what you say, "Mm -mm, not going to do this. So first of all, organization from a teacher level, it avoids some some burnout. Organization from an administrative level, you help your teachers not burn out. You start to recognize what is a teaching function and what is a clerical function. And every time you start asking a teacher to do a clerical function, you stop Mm -hmm. and you ask, is there another way? I got tired of walking past classrooms and seeing good teachers writing receipts. Mm -hmm. So we figured out how we could centralize that thing, use technology and take up every receipt book in the building. And when we did, our faculty handbook got slimmer because all of those procedures about how you had to handle the money Teachers weren't handling money anymore. And every time we asked teachers to put together a list of whatever, probably we could get that list out of the software that's in the office. So as administrators, we've we've got to protect our teachers. And then we can go the next step and we can teach our kids some of these things. Mm-hmm where they won't have to figure this out on their own when they're a senior, that, that, that they've kind of been learning this stuff, you know, all the way up as a first grader. And as a first grader, you know, I, I take home my, my planner, my agenda, and instead of my teacher who needed to write a two-sentence note to my mother, instead of writing that on a slip of paper that gets stuck in the bottom of my book bag and surfaces in late May, that my teacher just shot said in my planner. And if my and we told our parents, if you only do one thing, look at your child's planner mm-hmm. at night. So there's that two sentences. The parent can respond right there. The teacher sees it the next day. And, and it makes things easy enough that they actually happen. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then finally, you know, the, they're all kind of stories. When you talk to adults who are successful in their jobs. And they start to talk about something that they learned when they were students that's helping them now. And, you know, this this kind of thing that, you know, this is great that, you know, that my teacher, she had this little notebook and she always she I would always see her write down the things that she needed to do. Uh, You know, I I told you I was a big paper planner user. So my first year as a principal, you know, I've got my my day timer and it's always with me. My teacher's wondering, what is he writing in that? book. But they also noticed that it was like whatever they said that was important, immediately I wrote it in that book. And then pretty soon it happened. It's like whatever went in the book, it got done. So one of the best professional development activities we had was we just we just took a little session. I said, let me just show you what I'm doing and explain it to them. And, and they were like, this is so simple. Mm-hmm. This would work. Yeah. And uh, so many of these things roll right into for the folks that are listening that are homeschool parents as educators mm-hmm. they are teaching their children. They're organized. They can use a lot of these same strategies um, that you're giving teachers for their own homeschool settings. Absolutely. Yeah, because we've got busy parents who are now taking on the role of being teacher. Mm-hmm. And they're also parent and maybe also holding down a job here or there in their quote unquote free time. Right. Um, And having to, you know, raise children who are going to go out and be able to be successful and keep all the balls in the air. 
It's teachable, but somebody's got to teach it. Right. Okay. So that leads me to let's wrap up by talking about your books. So we have Get Organized Time Management for School Leaders huh? and Get Organized Digitally, the Educators, the Educator's Guide to Time Management. So tell us a little bit about what folks are going to find in those resources, where they can get them. Um Absolutely. I just happen to have a copy of both of course. here. So uh, Get Organized Time Management for School Leaders came out in 2016. So it, it's a system that handles both it's the paper and the digital. And I wrote it from the standpoint of, could somebody pick this book up 50 years from now and it be relevant? So you won't find the word Google, Microsoft, Apple. There is a chapter on Evernote, but otherwise it's mm-hmm. It's principles, it, it's nuts and bolts of systems, but you know, we don't talk about the specific tools. Uh, so how to get it for for all things me, come over to my website, frankbuck.org. Get on the email list mm-hmm. that you'll see right there on the home screen, and you get the first chapter right off the bat. But um Amazon, you know, you can get it there. 2020, and we all remember 2020, when if it had not been for technology, we wouldn't have had school. My editor came back to me and said, could you do another book that just focuses on the tech? So get organized digitally. And that's what I thought, let me roll the dice. Instead of what's going to be relevant 50 years from now, let me just go with, here's what I'm using right now. Here's the best stuff right now. And if two years from now, we need to do another edition. In two years, we'll do another edition. So all the stuff about remember the milk, Evernote here, uh, setting up, you know, Google Drive. And that shared with me. Who have you ever met that has had an organized shared with me? Well, it tells you how to do it in here. Uh, Email, digital calendar. And Christy, a technology book can get awfully dry. So as I was writing this, I'm going, you know, ah, how are we going to make this interesting enough people actually want to read it? So it's written in story form. So what you're meeting are people that I tried to make them likable and tried to make them relatable. So these people are reading it going, the person sounds just like me. I've got, you know, I've got three kids. we got to get this one to soccer and to dance, and I can take it on a new job, and we got the Christmas concert, and uh and it's it stories about the challenges that they're facing and how they are using technology tools to make things easier. Um, for anybody who has heard the name Tim Ferriss, it's probably in connection with a book called The Four Hour Work Week, not the four day work week, but the four mm-hmm. hour work week. And that's a stretch. But there's another book that he wrote called A Tribe of Mentors. And in there is one little line that says, what would this look like if it were easy? Mm -hmm. And it was like, boy, if that's not a drop the mic moment right there, we've got to make this old life easy. And it can be. We've got the tools So between the tools and the strategies to use them. So for everyone who's listening, step number one, let's make it easy. Let's make it easy. Frankbuck.org. Get on the email list. You're going to get the first chapter of this book. A few days later, you'll get a guide on how to set up Remember the Milk, and it's all free. And then every Tuesday, you hear from me with a little short uh, email with with things that I've found that I think are useful. Uh, Both books are available on Amazon. And my goal is not for anybody to say, I've read it. I enjoyed the book. Or it was a good book. What I want people to say is, this changed my life. Mm-hmm. That's what this is all about. Yeah. Yeah. Changing your life so that life becomes easy. Mm-hmm. So you can enjoy the fun stuff. Exactly. <laughs> stuff like this. I got a thousand things I could be doing, but I'm not thinking about a single one of them. The only thing I'm thinking about right now is this interview that mm-hmm. you and I are doing. Yeah. And for, for every teacher... We want them to be thinking about the lesson that they're doing and interacting with those kids and doing what they thought teaching would be like. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Well, Dr. Frank Buck, thank you so much. This has been such a wonderful conversation and so many great things that I'm hoping that all of our listeners are have been writing things down and are listening and are going to go back and listen to this again. Um, get on uh, frankbuck.org for all the resources um, that Frank just told us about. But thank you. What a great conversation. I really appreciate your time. <laughs> today. This, this was a wonderful use of my time. Absolutely. Yeah. I enjoyed it so much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. And this is Christy Hull. And before I sign off, as I normally do on the Classroom Matters podcast, I want to make an announcement to all of the listeners that don't know yet. We do have a new YouTube channel for our sister uh, station and all of our other content that you would normally get on the educate.today website, you can now find on our brand new YouTube channel, First Person Classroom on YouTube. You can also find the Classroom Matters podcast on YouTube as well. Thank you so much. And I will see you next time.